为什么强大的国家都会走向灭亡呢？古希腊、罗马帝国、不列颠帝国、美国，因为他们都犯同样的错误，与原来使得他们成功的原则背道而驰。美国政府企图以庞大的开支和税收来摆脱严重的经济衰退。巨额的所谓刺激开支、庞大的医疗改革、政府接管私有企业、债务累累，当然我们是他们的大债主。<笑>现在他们都得给我们干活。<笑>Regardless of whether its debt is foreign or domestically held, the U.S. faces no risk of default. That's nonsense. If an individual maxes out his or her credit cards again and again, the bank would eventually put an end to the line of credit, and the individual would default. After enough irresponsible spending, there are no more credit cards. Sooner or later, the government is going to max out. But Ken, the government is not like you and me. The U.S. government is a monetary sovereign, which means that it prints and issues debt in its own non-convertible currency. Basically, a government can always credit bank accounts and add to bank reserves whenever it sees fit, so it can't default on debt paid in its own currency. I don't know, Randy. Relying on China and other foreign countries to fund our budget deficit just seems fiscally unsustainable. Now you're just throwing words around, Ken. Tell me. What do you mean by fiscally unsustainable? Well, what if the U.S. borrows so much that it is no longer able to pay the interest it owes on bonds and other debt owned by foreigners like China? Like I said, Ken, a sovereign government spends in exactly one way: by crediting bank accounts. Interest is paid on government bonds through a keystroke entry that adds to the nominal value of the bond. It is done this way regardless of whether the bond is held by foreigners or domestic residents. So, there is no more risk of involuntary default on foreign-held sovereign debt than on domestic-held sovereign debt. Regardless of where the debt is held, the U.S. government cannot be forced to default. But Randy, what if the U.S. runs enough deficits that the Chinese and other foreigners no longer want to lend to the U.S. government? How would the U.S. finance its debt then? Ken, the Chinese are not "quote unquote" financing U.S. government spending because the monopoly issuer of the dollar is the U.S. government. You seem to forget that the whole way China comes to own U.S. dollars and treasury debt in the first place is by maintaining a trade surplus with us. The Bank of China knows its reserve deposits at the U.S. central bank don't earn interest, so it buys U.S. treasuries. If the rest of the world wanted to stop accumulating dollar-denominated assets, it would have to stop running current account surpluses against the U.S. But it still makes me nervous to think about all of our dollars going into the hands of foreigners. Think of it this way, Ken: when our interest payments go out of the country, then there are more U.S. dollars in the hands of Chinese consumers and investors. The Chinese could use the dollar-denominated income to buy things here in the U.S., which could lower our trade deficit with China. So really, it's not such a bad thing after all. Well, if the Chinese start all of a sudden putting more dollars into the U.S. economy, couldn't that lead to inflation? Not necessarily. While increased spending may, in some instances, lead to an increase in the overall price of goods and services, it really depends on the state of the economy. I see. But let me ask you this: What if China and other foreign lenders decide that they no longer want to hold U.S. debt in the form of bonds? What if they claim that the interest rate paid on securities is too low and threaten to liquidate their holdings? Couldn't this put pressure on the U.S. government to raise the interest rates it pays on bonds? Well, Ken, as I said, 
The whole reason the government sells bonds in the first place is to offer an interest-earning alternative to reserves. If a foreign government decides to sell bonds that have not yet matured, then that means they will just have more reserves. This will not put pressure on the government issuing the bonds to offer higher interest rates because it can always just stop selling bonds and let markets accumulate reserves. But what if the Chinese decide to sell all of their US currency? Wouldn't this put downward pressure on the value of the dollar? Ah yes, the issue of exchange rate pressure. That's a valid concern. But when foreigners decide to sell off the government's securities, they must first find willing buyers. It is possible that potential buyers will purchase bonds only at a lower exchange rate. But this would not be a smart trade for China. Are you saying that reducing its holdings of US securities could have a negative impact on the Chinese economy? Indeed. You were right to think that a large sell-off of China's US holdings could diminish the value of these securities in international markets. For this reason, China would suffer large losses in the sale of its US securities. This would, in turn, decrease the value of China's remaining dollar-denominated assets. So the same would be true if the value of the dollar were greatly reduced in international currency markets as a result of China's sell-off? Exactly. And China wouldn't want that because this would decrease the value of its dollar-denominated assets. You got it Ken, I couldn't have said it better myself. So if I'm understanding this right, wouldn't that mean that the value of China's currency would rise against the dollar? Indeed. And if the value of China's currency rose against the dollar, then US demand for Chinese imports would decline. As I'm sure you're aware, nearly one quarter of Chinese exports go to the United States. A sharp reduction of US imports from China could have a significant impact on China's economy, which is heavily dependent on exports for its economic growth. So basically I have no reason to fear China taking over the US anytime in the near future? Right, Ken. And don't believe any more fear mongers about how our debt to GDP ratio is fiscally unsustainable. Thanks, Randy. You're the best. No problem.